are ready to do the skills. And are you ready for me? Yeah. Okay. The first skill that we're going to do this afternoon is hand washing. I actually want to take this off. It'll be in my way. When you're going to lab and clinical, you do have to have your badge with you, but it's a really good idea to have it so it's a small clip so you can put it somewhere where it's out of the way. Okay, not the lanyards. They will get stuck everywhere. Okay, so for hand washing, how long do you wash your hands? 20 seconds at least. Good. Okay. And when I wash my hands, do I need to do anything first? Take my jewelry off. Okay. What if I have any cuts? What do you think? You cover them after you finish the skill. Cover them after I finish washing my hands. So what would that, it would, it would give who a risk, me or my patient? If I have a cut on my finger? So I want to wash my hands and then cover up, because I do have a cut, okay? So I want to cover that up. So 20 to 30 seconds, and do I want to use bar soap or do I want to use the uh, liquid pump soap or? Okay, did any of you get to culture bar soap in microbiology? And did you see that it grows stuff? Yeah, that is gross. That is gross. So when we go out to our long-term care facilities and when you go out to acute care facilities, you're not going to see bar soap. You're going to see those nice little dispensers. Yes, you hope. Sometimes families bring it in because they think it's better. So <laughs> they do. Okay. So we're not really going to be seeing bar soap out there. If you do see it, it really ought to be thrown away. Okay, if it's in an unopened box, they're using it as sort of a sachet in the drawer, that's fine. But if they're actually using it, we know it harbors bacteria. So okay, we're not going to use it. Um, can, can you start at the mindset that the patient um, is their home? And don't break it. Don't make them throw it away. That's why we come in for educators instead of really experts at family. So have you met Ms. Shirey? No. Okay. <laughs> she teaches the other section, the one that we keep talking about, the one that makes me have deja vu moments. Because I know I said something to you yesterday. I said, oh, I already told you, I already told you about this. And I thought, no, no, that was the other group. <laughs> so we help each other out. She's the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday group, and I'm the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday group. So, okay. So for washing your hands, really, it's pretty much the very same thing that you learned in CNA. So you get your, help, your paper towels out. How many paper towels should I have? Three. At least three. Okay. Three is fine. What's the next step? She's doing it over there. Turn the water on. Okay. Yes, things are in the way. So she's already removed her jewelry. She has checked for any cuts. <laughs> she's trying now. Okay. So, for nurses, we're actually going to wash this lower part of our wrist, too, okay? Because that's where the gloves are going to cover. And as nurses, we're going to do a lot of things with our hands. So the difference in the way you wash your hands, always, and the way we're wa going to want you to do it is in the drying. Okay? So everything else is really the same. She's going to wet her hands, she's going to get the soap on, she's going to rub all the surfaces, especially under the nails, and she's going to do that at least 20 to 30 seconds. When she's rinsing, how do you rinse? Am I there yet? Down. Right. Are you there yet? Let's see, probably pretty close. You're pretty close. Anybody watching the clock? Do the 20 seconds. So here's the difference. Because as nurses, we're going to do a lot of intricate work with our fingers, especially. When you dry, you're going to pick up a paper towel, you're going to dry from fingertips to wrist, never going back over that, that area that you touched. Okay? Grab the next paper towel, fingertips <laughs> to wrist. Yeah, she's going to throw it on the floor. 
never going back up. Why do you think that is? Recontamination. Recontamination. Exactly. exactly. And the third paper towel turns off the faucet. So really, very little tiny difference. We just want you to be pay attention to drying and never go back up and drag bacteria back up to your fingertips, which is really your working area. That's it. That's the only big difference. So when we do our skills day next week, What's going to happen is you're going to be in groups, most likely alphabetical, and you're going to go through as a group, and each one of you, as you're kind of lined up and getting ready to do hand washing, you're going to be supervising each other and watching for if somebody goes back up, watching for if somebody accidentally touches the sink after they think they're finished washing, things like that. You're going to actually be kind of signing off on each other. So a, an instructor will be in the room, but this is not really a punitive thing. You're just, we're just making sure that you're up to date on what you want, what you need to be doing now as a nurse. You learned all these things as CNAs, but we need to take you up a little step into nursing, okay? When can I use alcohol? Oh yeah. What if I had to use that nice little alcohol thing on the wall? Or make more of like, when can I not use it? Yeah, there you go. Uh, Somebody's on isolation, visibly soiled. Yep. Okay. If, if I look and my hands are really dirty, I don't want to use that. I want to use real soap and water. And how much should I use? They say the size of a dime. It might be a little bit more if you have larger hands. But it needs to be enough to keep your hands wet so for, you can get for this, in. doing this for 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. It should take 20 seconds for what to you dry. have on there to dry. Because this is what's, this friction, right, is helping with that hand washing, okay? Okay. And when we come to long-term care, we are going to see those all over the place. We're going to be using them a lot. After a while, after you use the hand gel for quite a few times, I know I feel like I just can't wait to actually wash my hands. Okay, you can get that sticky stuff off now. There used to be something out in the literature that said ten. seven to nine, Sep so seven to nine times nine. you should always wash your. I don't know if that's still yeah. appropriate. I I haven't seen anything definitive with how many times, yeah. but C diff is one of those things that doesn't actually work. And they'll take it's the not effective. Down if your patient has C diff, they'll still empty them. You can't use them. The other thing that hand gel is not effective against, and it's important for you to know here in this classroom, is the good old rhinovirus, the common cold. You really need to do good hand washing, okay? Now, it is effective against the flu, so, you know, we always have to talk about that when we're here in this classroom and you're pretty close together. When one person starts to get something, it usually does spread. So keep in mind that your good hand washing, your good hand hygiene can really help you and help your patients too. Okay. Questions about hand washing? Yes. See, if we're going, it seems like we're going up a little further on the yeah. ready to go up a little further. Our watch. Just push it off. Push it up. If your watch doesn't move, then you can take it off and you know put it in your pocket for that moment. Don't forget about anything that you put on the counter if you take your watch it's off, your jewelry, all that. Okay. Well, pick it up with a paper towel and drop it in your pocket. You know, you need your watch. You do need your watch on for clinical. You'll need your watch for certain skills that we're going to do. But you don't need a lot of other jewelry. Even a simple ring. If I'm doing something and I'm moving and transferring and repositioning a patient, that ring can get stuck on the bed frame. And you can actually injure yourself pretty much that way. So what kind of ring can you wear to clinical? Just a plain band. I know somebody that lost their setting in the bed. Oh. Under they were underneath the bed because they were wearing their diamond. Lost their engagement ring diamond because they were underneath the prongs came loose. Oh yeah. And they lost they lost their setting. Wow. Well. Okay. Well that's not yeah. happy. Mm -hmm. Or scratch the patient. Yeah, that's the other thing, scratching the patient accidentally. I mean, so. you wouldn't do it intentionally. 
personally, but trying to get patients, because when you go out to the facilities, you will see people wearing big, fat diamonds and tall diamonds and stones And everywhere. long nails. And longer nails, because they don't enforce that like, they, mm -hmm. like we do. But uh, yeah, that's how a lot of skin tears happen. Basically, as far as nails go, you should be able to look and not see your nails. Mine are actually a little bit long right now. I need to cut them. Very good. Okay. Okay. So, when do we wash hands? Before and after patient care. How about, you know, you all just traded in gloves today. How about gloving? Before and after gloving. Okay. After eating, before and after eating. Might as well do that too. Especially if you've been doing patient care. Okay. We wash our hands a lot. Before and after going to the bathroom. So a lot, a lot, a lot. Anytime you think about it, wash your hands now. Seriously. That's pretty much what it comes down to. You will wash your hands so many times in a day that you can't imagine. You will also go through boxes of gloves. More than you ever imagined was possible. So okay. now for the skills check off next week. You really don't have to wear gloves for any of these skills. Okay? So you really don't need to bring anything that's in your blue bag. Just bring yourselves and wear your uniforms. What do they need? Yeah, they may be using the mannequins for transfer. Oh, okay. my station. And if we were using the mannequins, we okay. have gloves. So if we're using the mannequins for transfers, then you are asked to wear gloves because the oils from your skin can actually over time damage the mannequins. So they have very sensitive skin. So okay. Okay. So we'll move on to height and weight. So and anybody like you need me to get weight? Yeah. You might have to put that in the question for her. Who wants to be the volunteer? Who needs a volunteer? participation and we will not they will not there you go we're not we're not gonna show what a joke okay so for height and weight first of all this is the scale that we're going to use here and i know that in a lot of settings now you've got digital you've got really nice convenient scales but this is a good old-fashioned one you might still see this in practice and usually when somebody comes into the hospital, we do want to get that baseline height and weight. So this particular scale is considered locked as it is. Okay, it does have wheels, but it does not move so she can see. until I tilt it. Okay, so when it's seated like this, it's considered to be locked. So I don't have to lock this one. This one, however, has both pounds and kilograms on it, and it also has inches and centimeters down here. So if you have never used this particular scale, this type of scale, do practice with it a little bit. So the first thing I usually get is height. So I would typically ask my patient about how tall you are, okay? And I'm gonna start to raise this now, because I'm shorter. So I'm gonna put that up there so they don't bump you in the head. Which way should he stand? Facing the scale or facing outward? Uh, outward. Facing outward. So I'm gonna have you step up here. Because and you kind of assist your patient. Oh yeah, paper towel, sorry. <laughs> Put a paper towel down. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And let me get my coffee out a little bit more. Oh, <laughs> I think I'm okay. Yeah, I might need help. <laughs> okay, pretty good. So now you can step away. <laughs> okay, so this actually, our scale made you just a little shorter. It gave you five, seven and a half. <laughs> okay, the measuring part is down here where this arrow is. So it's down here at the middle. So you don't have to look way up there above your head. Okay, so that's the first step. You actually would have your patient get off the scale and not try to turn around on that wiggly surface. So the next part will be the weight. Okay, so I'm watching this and making sure it floats freely. Okay, so, okay. Be careful when you're moving these counterweights because
of this dog food both kilograms and pounds. So you want to make sure that you get it where you want it to be. This little notch will point to either kilograms or pounds. And sometimes they're really close. So you want to make sure you're in the right area. Okay, come on over. This time I'm going to have them take the scale. Because sometimes patients know about what they weigh and they're going to help. And I just want it to float again. And there we go. Okay, up down. Okay, so when I'm reading this, thank you very much. So the big counterweight, is it okay if I say? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, it's at 150, and up here it's at four, and I have three little lines before the next, before the five. So each one is worth a quarter. So it is actually at four and a quarter, so 154 and a quarter. With our math rules, though, we round all weights to the tenth. So what's my reported measurement going to be? 154.3, correct, okay? So just keep that in mind. So with the half, you don't have to do anything. With the three quarters, you also have to round up. Okay? Okay. So practice with it a little bit. You'll see lots and lots and lots of different scales. Um, one of the other things that we just had added is our bed over here is new, and it does have a bed scale in it. So that type of a scale I know I'm going to be lost now. It actually has a place where you can zero it out. It has to be a little bit raised to zero it out. The patient would already be there. They should have on just a gown, basic linens, remove any of the extra covers, and you can hit weigh, and it does. That's usually a bear that's actually quite decent. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You zero it before. You zero it before. Well, if you're weighing accurate. every day. Going back, let's see how accurate it is. Okay. Put it back on the back. Oh yeah, let's see. And it has to be zeroed with. We have to. We're gonna. You would put what whatever you want. So if you want to. I know. Bonus point. Uh, it is. Okay. Zero. 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 Do you have to raise this one? No. You don't. And what, what was it? 154 and a quarter. I thought you said 54. No, 54. Okay. 150, yeah, 154.8. 150. 150. There you go. That's pretty close. Wow. We have a few extra linens on the bed that probably takes up that little bit of difference. Awesome. Well, no, because it was zero. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you zeroed it. Oh, you zero zero. Zero. Yeah. Okay. Well, did you put your keys in your pocket? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When would I weigh somebody? Best time. In the morning. Yes. With what clothing? Yeah. Right. Yep. The, it is doesn't really matter as long as they're weighing with the same amount of clothes that they had on yesterday. Yeah. I don't want to weigh them today in no shoes and tomorrow weigh them in their boots right. or jeans and the next day do a nightgown. nightgown. Does that make sense? If you no. work in home health, that's a really huge, big issue because we have telemonitors where the patients get on at a certain time every day. It's set up and it calls them and says it's time to get on the scale. And we have to tell them because if they get on with their shoes on and they're up three pounds, that's an issue that we have to get them. As a nurse, we have to we deal with that. We send a nurse out because we've yeah. got to make sure that it's not fluid in their lungs. And so we'll say, well, just, oh, yeah, I think I had my boots on yesterday. One guy was up to seven pounds. So that, that yeah. education is a big... Yeah, it's not so bad in right. a hospital setting, but at least everybody has a gown on. At the same time, something so simple as height and weight really can make a difference for us. Yes, we get it at time of admission, but certain conditions might require us getting a daily weight. 
and Ms. Shirey is exactly right, if somebody gains more than two pounds in a day or five pounds in a week, that's an automatic alert. That tells us, you know, most people, no matter what, cannot eat that much in a day to gain that much overnight. So that means they're holding fluids. And if they have certain cardiac conditions, certain kidney conditions, that's kind of a red flag. We're now a little bit concerned they're not getting rid of that fluid like they should be. So it alerts that if they're at home, we've now got to make that nursing visit and see what's going on with them. Okay. Probably going to be asking a lot of questions on the phone. Are you short of breath? Are you more fatigued today? Um, are you able to urinate? Do your ankles swell? Um, are they swollen right now? All those sorts of things. Okay. Are your rings tighter? all those things that might let us know that they're holding fluid. Okay, questions or concerns with height and weight. There are lots of different ways to obtain height and weight. If we had somebody, for instance, we needed to get their height and they were not able to get out of bed, I could take a tape measure and have them lie as straight as they possibly can. Might need to have somebody help me, okay? And I could get a pretty good estimate that way. That's pretty much the way we end up doing it with infants. Okay, got to straighten their little legs. Okay, make sure their head's straight and we measure them with a tape measure. Or sometimes there are little scales that actually have headboards and footboards. And then you measure that way. So, lots of different ways to do it. 